What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video. If you want to take your average looking motherboard and turn it into something like this on a low budget, then this is the video for you. Starting things off, we have some acrylic. Now I've just got to measure the shape and size of the motherboard. This will work with any motherboard that you have, so don't be afraid if you do not have this motherboard. So I've marked out the shape on a bit of acrylic and I'm using one of my plastic cutting blades in my jigsaw. Now make sure you cut this out with the film still on because we're gonna need the protective film later on. And the protective film also stops the acrylic from melting when you're actually cutting it out. So that's one little handy tip that I know a few people in the comments have been talking about with their acrylic melting when they're actually cutting it. Please do make sure you use the correct blade and with the film on. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm trying to mark out the sections to cut out of the motherboard armor, which I want to be visible so I can plug my cables in. Right now, I'm taking out the SATA cables and I'm also taking out all of the IO cables, which are down the bottom of the motherboard, such as the power, a few fan hubs, reset, and audio hub, and things like that. Now I wanna take out the 24 pin and a couple of the fan hubs to the side of it. So I'm gonna mark that out, just using a pen and a ruler, pretty simple guys. And taking my time when I cut it, trying to make sure I get nice and straight. Of course, once it is all cut out, you want to go ahead and sand it all back. Get rid of all the jigsaw blade marks. Now, I sanded back, but then I also made sure that I gave the acrylic a bit of a wet sand. And what happens is when you do wet sand the acrylic, you actually see the jigsaw blade marks a lot more when the acrylic is wet. So it's very handy to keep that in mind. You won't get it tonight. So I've just cut out the section where the memory slots actually sit, so that's going to fit nice and snug within that position. And we've also skipped forward a bit so you guys don't have to see me constantly cutting. I've cut out the cooler position and a bit of the top section where some of the motherboard is sticking out and I don't want the motherboard armor to cover that section. I've also cut out the I.O. part where all of your USB cables and everything like that plug into. So now it's just a nice snug fit. So now we're gonna think about the PCI lanes. So I'm not actually gonna be using this motherboard, but I'm gonna cut out one slot for a graphics card to plug in just to show you guys what to do. Now, because of all of the capacitors and everything on the motherboard, this armor is not going to actually sit flat with the motherboard. It's going to be raised a bit, but that's not going to matter because it's still going to allow for the graphics card to slot in. Now, one main problem that you might find with this motherboard armor is that I would have to take my GPU backplate off to actually be able to reach the release button for the GPU to actually take it out of the slot. So that's not too much of an issue for me, but this is a tutorial and I thought I'd let you guys know. So I've cut out the slot, the GPU can simply slot in like so. And this is one of the GPU backplates that I made in a previous tutorial, which I showed you guys a couple of months ago. I'll leave that uh, up the top in a card or something for you guys if you want to check out that tutorial as well. So for this next section, I'm actually making the I.O. cover and I'm heating a bit of acrylic so I can bend it around and down and connect it to the actual motherboard armor to create one separate piece. So I'm heating this evenly and I'm using the piece of wood as a 90 degree bend to make sure I get a nice bend in this acrylic. So I'm just pressing down trying to get it to bend and then I'll use my hands to further increase that bending. Now one problem that I did have with this is the acrylic does cool down quite fast so when I was bending it part of it broke off but we're gonna work with this because I don't want to be wasting acrylic. 
and we're going to make this work in the build. So now that I've got this section all marked up, I'm going to bend this down so I can cover the other side of the I.O. panel. So now that it's bent, let's give it a sand down and we'll get it looking nice and neat. This is just 180 grit sandpaper just to get the jigsaw blade marks out and get this fitting nice and snug. So as you can see there, it's not quite covering the whole thing. That is the section that broke off, but we made that nice and neat, so it's not gonna be noticeable in the end. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting my sharp blade and I'm actually cutting along some of that protective film and creating some lines for in the future when I peel that back. I'm also taping off this section so I can create a couple of shapes on there and paint it and get some cool effects happening. Same with this section, just scoring along this line with my sharp blade so that I can remove the film to glue my sections on, which I had cut out previously, and also paint some different colors. Pretty simple, pretty easy, guys. Just keep at it. I'm peeling back the film. I'm going to use an acrylic weld solution to actually stick these on later so it actually fuses the two pieces of acrylic together rather than gluing them which is a really cool thing about that it makes it a lot stronger as well so i just went along with my knife and created just a couple of bends on these pieces that i cut out and now i'm i'm gonna leave that on but i'm going to tape the back section of them because i need the back section clear so i can weld them onto the acrylic armor I've painted the back section white because that's what I want to show through once I peel that film off. This is the main motherboard armor which I'm painting the back side green. I did about three coats green, this is just enamel paint. Sticks really well to acrylic and it is fast drying. After my three coats, I'm just going to give it a couple of coats of clear just to protect it from scratching because if it does scratch and it happens to be in part of that design part which is meant to show through, then it's going to look very bad. So you can see I peeled off the back of the paint and I still have some clear sections on that part that I'm holding in my left hand. So I'm just going to apply my glue on the main acrylic armor and then stick my piece down in place. Now, if that acrylic weld solution was to get where the paint is, it would make a mess of it. And that would show through in the paintwork and the finish would not be good. So I'm gluing down my second piece. You can see that I still have the vinyl on the top and I'm gonna leave that there until we paint it black. A few dots here and there, you don't need too much, guys, because as I said, it acts as a weld, so just a little bit here and there will definitely hold it in place. So now that this big piece is down in place, it is time to give the whole armor a nice paint job. This is what it looks like before we go ahead and paint it. Now this acrylic weld solution also does dry very fast guys, so don't be shy to start painting straight away. So I'm going over the whole motherboard armor with a nice black color. Now personally, I would like to use a matte black on this, but unfortunately all we had on hand is a satin black, so it's got a bit of a shine to it, a bit of a tiny bit of a gloss. And now we're going to remove all of these sections of film that we had left on the motherboard. This will show through all of that white, all of that green, and you guys will see the finished result. So you don't have to do green and white. Personally, I was going to do a black, white, and red armor, but unfortunately I didn't have red on hand, so I'll just use whatever I had, and this is how it turned out. So there is a couple of paint marks here and there, but if you lightly scratch it with your sharp blade, you won't actually scratch the acrylic, but you will remove the paint. So 
that's another thing to keep in mind when you're actually doing this because it will clean it up and it'll make it look that much better, especially inside of the build. So I'm just going over with a few coats of clear just to protect all of that paint because we definitely do not want something like this getting scratched. Alright, let's put it on the motherboard and we'll see how it turned out. So putting it on the motherboard, I'm just using a few pieces of double-sided tape just to hold it down. Pretty simple, guys. The tape is not on anything conductive. I've got it on a couple of the few other PCI lanes that I'm not using and on the back of the I.O. panel. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you liked this tutorial and you want more. Also, suggest a tutorial down below, guys, because I would love to hear some of your feedback and suggestions. Remember to check out more videos on the channel. We've got lots of custom PCs, water cooling builds, tutorials, and reviews, and we'll see you all in the next one. Cause I can fly.